you lose your source for all things Everton. Uh, I am Connor Williams and we're back with another one of our 24-7 news report videos. As always, we start with the headline news and the headline news uh, has been ongoing since from last night. So there will be in bits and drips and drabs. Um, it was that Everton are in negotiations with Sporting over signing defender Ruben Vinagre on loan with an option to buy. Vinagre has already accepted the loan, but both clubs are currently in talks about a fee for the option to buy. That came from Fabrizio Romano. Um, not long after that, record Portugal. But Ruben uh, Vinagre is close to joining on a season-long loan with an option to buy. Everton will be paying the defender's wages in full. Um, like I said, that was that. The reports of that came out really last night. Since then, it's moved on quite a bit. Um, you have Fabrizio as of ninety minutes ago of recording. So at about mm, about five o'clock today, said Ruben Vinagre is all is already on Merseyside to undergo his medical. Um, it was reported by Fabrizio Romano that Sporting and Everton are closing on a loan deal. Um, final details uh, to be resolved with the value of the option to buy. But Agre is keen and already agreed personal terms, um, which is, you know, brilliant. To, well, it, it means the deals, we might actually sign a player. And the deal seems to be moving quite helpfully. We did put on the Toffee Blues Twitter uh, another poll. Don't forget, as always, if you want to go and vote in the polls, link in the description to the Toffee Blues Twitter. Follow us on there. After every major head, like major news that we tweet, the first pin underneath replied by the account will be the poll. Um, not every single news, but the big ones. It was Ruben Vinagre at Everton. Leave us your thoughts. Uh, the options this time were thumbs up. I don't know. Thumbs down. 43.2% of you said thumbs up. 47.2% of you said I don't know, including myself. And then 9.6% of you said thumbs down. 2,406 of you have voted. It's open for another 15 hours, so go vote if you want to have your voice heard. And um, Yeah, I left with this with I don't know. I did do a video um, with um, Proxima Jonanada um, and Aaron from the channel, uh, from the account there, who's a, um, an Everton fan and a scouser, um, and also a, a Portuguese journalist, though. So he knew him very well and has double the interest in this. Uh, we had a good talk about um, Vinagre, about how we think he'll fare, or how Aaron thinks he'll fare uh, at the club. But what I got from that conversation, no, I won't spoil all of it because, you know, go watch the video. Um, but yeah, it, it just seems like a lad that... Um, what I got was that he was a bit like in Kunku in that he has the same pros and the same cons, but a, maybe a bit better quality in Kunku. He's definitely going to be playing a wing back in this system. Probably cover for Mikolenko. I don't think he takes him out the side. But um, in the same way that Nkunku's brilliant going forward, his end product's a bit a bit to be desired, but he can get up the line. Um, and defensively, he is very, very dubious. Same with Vinagre. He can get up the line well. End product here or there. He could have got more assists, Aaron said, and Calvert Lewin will play into that being a big lad and with an aerial presence if we keep hold of him. Um, yeah, but defensively, he did say that he's a little bit dubious and that Anthony from Ajax absolutely tore him apart once at Sporting and that sort of sealed the end of it for him. The way I see it, I, put, I don't know because it's a loan with an option, not an obligation, an option to buy. So if he does end up being not up to the mustard, we don't have to buy him. We can just send him back. His wages are apparently quite low, hence why the club are willing to pay all of his wages. Um, for me, this is a low risk. Could be low reward, could be medium, could be high reward, but it's a very, very low risk. So I don't have massive issues with that. Um, we've paid a lot more for a lot worse or a lot less. Um, we also have the news that Everton are interested in Real Betis midfielder Guido Rodriguez. Uh, Everton have approached the Argentinian, but there have been no formal offers yet. That's come from C.L. Merlo, um, which is a Portuguese, uh, sorry, an Argentinian. I've got Portugal on the brain. Um, an Argentinian news outlet. Um, so interesting to see that. Uh, we also have more on him. We have the Everton made an approach bid for Real Betis midfielder Guido Rodriguez. Blues have asked what conditions need to be met. Betis are initially asking for 40 million euros. 
been waiting for Everton to sign the Argentinian. That's come from Estado Deportivo by a sport witness. Um, yeah, listen, 40 million euros. Uh, uh, that's, that's a fair whack for a player who, by the way, is aged at... 28 years old. Um, I don't know. Obviously, he's the, he's a defensive midfielder, and that's what the club need, and the club know they need that. That's a lot of money, though, isn't it? Chelsea are also looking at him, supposedly, according to Football 365, um, because Kante's future might be in trouble there. Um, yeah, I, I, for 40 million, seems a bit steep. If we can get that down a little bit, then maybe. But um, yeah, 40 million just seems a little bit too steep for Everton at the minute. Um, we'll have to watch this. Well, I'm sure if the club are going to go in the way they've already been acting this window, we will try and get that down a little bit, maybe offer some structures or something. Um, but yeah, it'll be an interesting one. It, there is good news with this. It's a position I keep saying that we need to be looking at, and at least the club are looking at it. And that type of player as well, somebody who... He's a bit more... I was worried we were going to stick Harry Winks there. I don't think Harry Winks is the type of lad you need there. He's somebody a bit better. He's not so much a destroyer. He's a bit of both. Um, he's a bit like... I, I guess you would call him like a Rakista, couldn't you? Um, but he's a bit of both. Uh, he's an aggressive deep line playmaker that will win the ball and then look to spray it about, which is what Frank Lampard clearly wants with this Everton side. He wants us to be a possessive side, um, a possession-based. How well that's going to go is... Well, we'll only time will tell and theory put into practice. Um, I personally currently don't think we've got a squad for that, but if we get some of his um targets, maybe. Um, but yeah, he's certainly not the destroyer destroyer, uh, like the Donker would have been. But um, yeah, at least it's, at least they know where the where the issues are. Um we also have that Ellis Sims has turned down a move to championship side Blackpool and decided to move to Sunderland on loan. That's come from Matt Scrafton. He was a Blackpool writer for the Gazette. Uh, interesting one that he spent a bit of time out at Blackpool. Um, I thought he enjoyed it at the Seasiders. Going to Sunderland, a bit different, isn't it? Um, to be fair, both of these have got a, have got former Everton players. I think um, Sunderland, I think had Broadhead didn't they last season? Blackpool, I think if if you remember from the friendly the other day, you might have seen a lot of familiar faces in that Blackpool squad. Josh Bowler. Um, who looks to be moving away to Blackburn, and um, Luke Garbett being the, the two main ones. Luke Garbett, who was at the club way, way beyond, I think, his time. Um, and unfortunately and sadly, probably his legacy at the club is, um, you know, is sadly Carlo Angelotti saying who, <laughs> which is... Um, which is, you know, it's, it's not what any, any player really wants to be remembered as, but uh, that's the bit that went viral and that's the bit that's not Everton fan, maybe not Everton fans, but neutral fans feel. Uh, we also have the news that Everton are set to lose out on Min, uh, South Korean defender Kim Min Ja, who's on the verge of signing for Syria side Napoli. 25-year-old set to make the switch from Fenerbahce sometime this week, and according to reports, will pen a long-term deal with the club for a reported fee of 25 million. Um, we were after another centre back that seems to have cooled a little bit now. Maybe Tarkowski coming in has sort of lowered the priority of that. Maybe the club have realised defending another centre back isn't really the main priority. The main priority is defensive midfielder, it looks like, and a forward. Um, so we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. Speaking of forwards and how it's a bit of a priority for the club. The Toffees enter the race for Dennis, or shall I, that really should be re-enter the race for Dennis. According to reports via the Express, Everton are one of the whole host of clubs tracking the relegated Watford defender, Emmanuel Dennis. The 24-year-old hit 10 goals for the Hornets last season, with Nottingham Forest, West Ham and Southampton keen on a move for the striker. Rumoured for a fee of up to £20 million, Armando Brogia is another option as Frank Lampard looks to add to the front line. Um, yeah, this, again, um, read into it what you will. Nottingham Forest seems to be really pushing for players. We seem to be linked with a lot of players for us to link with. Um, can they get Dennis? You never know. Lingard went there, didn't they? Um, Southampton are after a striker. That it might be interesting in him, but I know they're really pushing for Liam Bellat from Manchester City. 
And West Ham were after Brozier. That broke down. It looks like they might get Skamaka, uh, who I think is a brilliant forward. I'd love for us to get him, but it looks like that's not happening. Um, he scores more goals than his XG, which if you don't know what that means, basically means that he scored, he scored more from tougher chances. Um, so he really does make use of what he gets. In terms of Dennis, though, I, I like Dennis. I've told uh, this channel a number of times, you guys, the viewers, that he is a lot more like-for-like like, um, to Richarlison in the fact that they can play anywhere across the front three, including centrally. Um, offensive actions-wise, there's a stats. There were stats all over Twitter um, that show that he is very much like-for-like like on a, a fee ref and stuff. He's more like-for-like like than Corne. So we'll have to, I can see why that's there. I don't know which one we're going to go for. I've heard, maybe Dennis, because I've heard um, from a lad that has links with Watford. He's a Watford fan called Lawns on Twitter. Um, I don't know his full name. I only know his Twitter app. But um, he seems to think that despite the fans, Watford and Everton do have a good business relationship because obviously the deals with Marco Silva, Richarlison, Abdelai Decore, which adds up, you know, because for all the fans might give, try and look for a rivalry, the clubs must get on, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to sign Decore after the silver Richarlison fiasco. So they don't hold any bad blood. Um, yeah, Dennis is one I'd, I'd really welcome at the club. Um, I think he's, I, I think he, he would do a very much job. And we do need forwards. Richarlison losing is a big loss. And that means our front three um, is one of them. Uh, it's one of them. Uh, but that's all I've got time for. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and comment down below your thoughts on anything I've spoken about. Do you like the look of Dennis? Would you prefer Broja, Guaido, Rodriguez? Let me know all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys very soon.